had not spent that much time with other Asian people who weren't my family. How much of my blood is Japanese and how much of my blood is American? Uh, just because I feel always between two cultures. Hey everyone, how's it going? So May is Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. And I wanted to make a video about my culture and heritage and how I think about that in me because I am Asian and American, I guess. I actually wanted to make this video like last year in May, but May went by way quicker than I expected. And it also did this year too, which is why this video is coming to you at the end of the month. So one of the types of videos that was really popular last year was like growing up Asian American, my struggles. And I kind of wanted to make something like that, but slightly different and just told from my perspective and just my story of growing up Asian American. I also don't really like calling it my struggles because I mean, well, yeah, there were some struggles. At the end of the day, I wouldn't trade anything for not being Asian. I really like being Asian. I mean, because it's me. I, I am Asian, it's in my blood. <laughs> so yeah, I feel like I had a pretty unique experience growing up Asian American and more specifically Japanese American. So I wanted to tell you kind of my life and how being Asian American has affected me and how it's been a part of my life and how I've thought about my cultural identity. I did reference in my yappy video that I was gonna talk about cultural identity. It felt like I had a pretty normal childhood until maybe about high school came around and then I thought about cultural identity issues, but we'll talk about that in another video. And now it's been a while and I feel like I finally should give this to you and I feel ready to talk about it. Okay, so let's start from the very beginning. So I was born and raised in America. My parents, who were both Japanese, immigrated to the States uh, in the early 90s to go to grad school here. My parents were the only ones here in the US in our family, and so everybody else, like grandparents, cousins, aunts, uncles, they all lived in Japan. So ever since I was little, we've gone back to Japan at least once a year. They had my brother and I, well, they were still in grad school, and we lived on the East Coast for the first like 10 years of my life. I was born in Massachusetts, my brother was born in New York, and then my childhood, I grew up in New York and Connecticut mostly. I did live in Japan for like two years between the ages of like zero and like two for a tiny little bit because my parents had a job in Japan, but it was such a long time ago and I was so young that uh, yeah, I don't really count them that much actually. But it did make it so that I learned Japanese first before I learned English, which I know is very common within Asian American households and kids, but I learned it because I was li li literally living in Japan. Like I remember my parents sent me to English school when I was like three or four when we first moved here. Most of my elementary school days I spent in Connecticut in some of those like really rural places in Connecticut. And I liked it. I mean, when you're a kid, you don't really like notice that you're much different from anybody else, except for maybe like the foods that you eat and stuff. But I mean, I had fun and there was nature everywhere. Yeah, there were some experiences that I look back on that now I realize like, yeah, it was pretty racist. Like for instance, I was put into English as a second language classes uh, from like first to third grade, even though I was pretty confident in my English skills at the time and I could totally do what the kids were doing. But I got pulled aside for every English class that I had. Um, and this lady who was my teacher, she asked me for my name and I was like, it's my Yuko. But she was like, do you have like an easier name to pronounce? Uh, so I gave her my middle name, which is an English name, but I didn't think about it much at the time, but now I'm kind of like, yeah, that was, was kind of racist. Like you can learn my name. Or like there was this other time in second grade where there was this new kid and he was half Asian and half white. And when I walked into school, not knowing the ethnicity of this kid yet, my friends were like, Mayuko, we have found you the perfect husband. And I was like, okay, yeah, let's see this guy. And I saw him and I was like, he's not that cute. But now that I look back on it, I'm like, they paired me up with him because I was the only Asian in the class and he was Asian. I mean, they're kids and like, there's no bad intent, obviously. And they're just trying to make patterns and like, there's nothing bad that came out of it, but it is kind of a thing where it's just like, oh, this is the experience of living as a minority. After fifth grade, we moved from Connecticut to San Diego because my parents got a new job. Um, and I started fresh again in, again, a predominantly white neighborhood and school. 
And the first couple of years of moving to San Diego was pretty turbulent because sixth grade is at a time where you just like start clicks and you also start noticing other people and there's popularity and there's groups and weird social things that are happening because of hormones and stuff. So the first couple of years I will say were really rough in making friends. And then I think I remember in eighth grade was the first time that I had like a mostly Asian friend group, which was super novel to me because I was like, I have not spent that much time with other Asian people who weren't my family. And I felt really comfortable in that space because while we were all very different kinds of Asian, I was like, hey, like no one's gonna make fun of me for the bento that I bring to school. Which yes, side note, uh, I feel really bad about this, but my mom used to make me delicious bentos to bring to school. And so many kids would ask so many questions about what the food is. Again, like that's not a bad thing. Like they're genuinely curious, but sometimes I would get opinions about my food or I would get like, oh, that's gross kind of complaints and stuff. And so I asked my mom to stop making me bento and give me Lunchables. And sometimes I would like hide and eat my bento, which is such a shame because my mom's bentos are really good. And she also put a lot of heart into that. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, mom. So then I went into high school and I was kind of this like, pretty stereotypically Asian kid. Uh, because my high school joined a lot of other middle schools, there was a lot more Asian people. Um, I was good at math because I had a lot of good math teachers and also because my dad tutored me in math because he used to be a math teacher. I took a lot of AP classes. Um, I actually didn't even know what they were in my freshman year because no one told me about them. So I, act I feel like in some ways I learned how to be Asian through some of my friends who did know a little bit more or whose parents told them like how to do stuff and what to do to go to college. Cause I think maybe the thing that my parents told me was just like, go to college and get a good education. But the how of like how to get through an American school system and how to do that was something that they didn't know. So I kind of had to figure it out myself, but luckily I had other friends and school counselors and teachers and stuff who I didn't really talk to because I was like, I can't really trust you for some reason. But high school comes with high school puberty issue things of existentialism and questions about you and yourself. And this is really when the cultural identity stuff hit. I mean, when I was little, I did ask my parents, I was like, am I Japanese or American? And I distinctly remember asking my dad, I was like, how much of my blood is Japanese and how much of my blood is American? And he was like, you're fully Japanese, but you're also American. And I was like, what? That makes no sense. So in high school, without any of those questions answered, I really started like thinking, I'm like, okay, like re really, who the heck am I? I also just got in a lot more like fights with my parents and I just noticed that their expectations of me was really different from what my friend's expectations from their parents were and stuff. And I remember them being very like kind of specific to Japanese culture. One thing that my parents always told me was like, we expect you to grow up as a Japanese woman living in America. And I was like, what the heck does it even mean? And I mean, sometimes it was small stuff like, don't forget to always bring a gift to whoever's house you're going to, or always bring your brother to your house. Or, I mean, the big one was that I had to do Japanese school on Saturdays, uh, like one of my two days off from high school and learn Japanese. So I think I was just really frustrated by like my parents' expectations, like what I thought my expectations were as an Asian person living in America at that time, but also my school's expectations, my friends' expectations, and I didn't even know what like my own expectations were. The question that I just really didn't know how to answer was, am I Japanese or am I American or am I Japanese American? None of those labels ever seemed to fit me because I'm not just Japanese, I'm also not just American. And Japanese American to me seemed like it described a completely different generation of people that I didn't really identify with. Japanese American described to me the descendants of a generation of Japanese people who immigrated to the US in the early 1900s and lived through World War II and the concentration camps and now are living in a very different state of Japanese Americanness. And I didn't identify with that because I still had family living in Japan. I tried to stay as connected as I could to Japan and its culture and what's going on. And luckily at the time too, I was friends with a lot of Asian Americans in my city and we were definitely a minority, but we like stuck together. 
And I think that really helped me through it all because while I'm not actually sure if they had some of the same questions, they also were living this like minority experience in the same town at the same school. And it at least gave me kind of just a sense of belonging that like, yes, I do have a place here and I belong here and I have friends who care about me. It was also around that time that YouTube became a thing and tons of Asian American YouTubers started flooding the platform and seeing them be them online was like revolutionary to me. I just remember following Kina Granis. She's half Japanese and half white and she was just like doing her. From the outside, it didn't seem like she was plagued by the same sort of debate inside her head of like, is she Japanese or American or what? She probably was in her head, but like, I was like, oh, she is just doing her and she's living her life. It was the first time that I was kind of like, you know, I don't need to identify into any of these three labels to define what my cultural identity is yet. I'm just gonna figure it out by myself. Like my parents obviously have a very different identity from me. My brother was three years younger and was kind of working through it on his own that I knew that I needed to just like make sure that no matter what I do, I felt very true to me and I felt myself the whole time. As long as my Yuko fit the label of who I was, then I was okay with it. I mean, I make it sound easy and stuff, but it was pretty hard because like at the time I was like watching so much Japanese television and listening to so much J-pop because I was like, I need to stay connected to my Japanese roots. But I mean, it was a way that I like helped my way through myself. Like I had a journal where I wrote about all this and it's all very existential and it's very teenagery, but it was the way that I processed like figuring out who the heck I was. Anyways, I graduated high school and I went on to college to UCSD, which if you don't know, is a very Asian school. I remember feeling the sense of like, oh, like I'm not, I'm not nearly as Asian as these other people. And also a lot of these folks were not Japanese because I mean, when you talk about Asian representation, like there's actually not that many Japanese people around, I think. But I still kind of went through this, like, I'm just gonna do me. Also computer science was really demanding and hard, so I kind of didn't have time to think about it, but I did join the Japanese Student Association as a way to just like get to know other Japanese people and kind of kept exploring a little bit like, who am I and what does this mean? And where do I find my place in the world? Although I will say in college that I started feeling this pressure of like, needing to be OG and have ties to the motherland and feel authentic and get like know what's going on in Japan, which I don't know, it's, it's like this underlying pressure that I feel like is still going on a little bit. Anyways, it was around this time that I started to feel a little bit of like pressure to stay connected to Japan and what's going on because I wanted to make sure to like stay true to my Japanese heritage, I guess. So then I graduated and I started working and I feel like when you're working, you have a little bit more agency over who you are and what you identify as and how you make decisions. So I was kind of really leaning into this, like I'm gonna do me and I'm gonna figure out what that means. Also starting to live by yourself means like, hey, like what are you gonna cook for yourself? Like, is it gonna be mostly Japanese food? How does eating Japanese food make you feel versus other kinds of food? And so I was exploring this identity in kind of a different way of just living through life and just feeling it out a little bit in this new environment called adulthood. And I think I'm still kind of on that journey of just like figuring out what my cultural identity is. But I think my kind of rule of just like, hey, you just do you and see how different things feel is still my policy. So do I identify as Asian American? Yeah, I would say so. Do I identify as Japanese? No. American? No. Japanese American? No, no not that either actually. I feel like recently I've just started labeling myself as like Japanese and American, uh, just cause I feel always between two cultures. That pressure of needing to stay OG and stuff of like being connected to the motherland still exists, but also I'm more willing to let it go because it's in place of making me feel more like me. And culture is just one aspect of my personality and who I am. There's lots of other dimensions that still need to be explored and sometimes are more important to me at different times. So growing up, I will say was a little hard because it felt pretty alienating. But at the time, I didn't really notice how being Japanese American was affecting my life. And now it's become a lot more apparent and I actually really embrace that side of me. And nowadays I'm really happy when I can share my culture with other people who are or are not Japanese. 
I think I have a maybe unique perspective on Japan and America that maybe I only share but with myself and people like me. But I like it and I think it really shapes who I am and my worldview and yeah. <laughs> That's the end of the sentence. I'm a huge fan of all the conversations that are going around about what it means to be Asian American, so I'm happy to throw my story in the mix because I don't think there's that many like Japanese American people in there.、Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions for me for anything specific I talked about in this video or anything else that you want to ask me about my cultural heritage, then leave a comment down below. I know y'all really like my yappy video and I'm happy to talk more about this. I'm really passionate about this stuff and I'm happy to. Be a part of the conversation. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video.、Um, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe. I don't get paid for either of those things, but it gives me a sense of what you like and how many people are interested in listening to my story. So please do those things. Hope you have a great day wherever you are. Bye. Kona, say bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, hi, Kona. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you. What's up? You want me to give you pets? What? What is it? What do you want? Do you want pets? Is that what you want? You want to be on my YouTube video? Are you a good boy? Yes, you are.